this week. I believe it was this week. Uh, hello, Facebook Live fans. We had a little technical difficulty there. Stick with us. Hopefully, it's going to work. I'm not trusting Facebook right now. I'm just not because I don't know what the heck is happening. However, we were talking about South Park and their most recent season premiere of their most recent season, which, like I said, I wasn't even aware South Park was still around. I'm not a, not a watcher myself, but I do like what they did. I like and hate what they did at the same time. So for their season premiere, they decided to to integrate integrate smart speakers. Smart speakers. So this would be like the Google Homes and and the Alexas and, or the Echoes, the Alexas, the, the Amazon Echoes, that kind of stuff. And so what they did was throughout the episode, the entirety of the episode for South Park, there would be certain times where one of the characters would say something and communicate with the smart speaker. I'm not going to say it. I was called out very, very long ago as far as saying it on the podcast and triggering other people's speakers, so I'm not going to do it. However, South Park and the creators of South Park and the producers of South Park uh, had no issue with doing that. They just simply didn't. It was interesting. Uh, and it was setting off smart speakers throughout the episode, like I said. Now, this is crazy because I'm starting to wonder if this is going to be a new thing where a lot of shows are going to integrate this and they're just going to continue doing it and it's going to be a thing. Now, the scary thing is there's a little show called Mr. Robot that I watch on USA Network. Mr. Robot, I've talked about it many times on this podcast. I highly recommend it for anyone uh, who's a fan of television in general. Uh, so check that one out. However, it's about hackers. And it's about a not like an anonymous type organization. If you've heard of anonymous, they're a hacking organization supposedly uh, around the world. And maybe you know, I don't. I only say supposedly because I don't know for a fact. Uh, and so I, I can only imagine people jumping out of their seats uh, if Mr. Robot did this and integrated a smart speaker, something that set it off. Uh, and for me personally, my Google Home is sitting right next to the television. It would completely set off the Google Home if they did something like that. And honestly, I'd probably jump straight off the couch. I would just completely jump straight off the couch uh, just because, you know, that would freak me out because I'm watching a show about hackers. However, an animated funny show, probably not as scary. Uh, so I do find it interesting. I do find it interesting. We'll see if there's more of this that happens, uh, you know, as, as things go on and, and whatever else. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Might be a new thing uh, where people are messing with. We t I talked about it a while back about Burger King, uh, how they had, had, had programmed something in to, to make the Echo respond. Uh, or maybe it was a Google Home. It was one of the, one of the smart speakers respond uh, and actually pull up stuff about Burger King. It was interesting. So I think we're going to see more and more about that. Uh, continuing on with TV. There's a new show coming out that I'm kind of excited about. I haven't seen a ton about it. I've just seen trailers and everything else. And it's called Big Mouth. It's coming out on Netflix. Netflix is just really hitting things out of the park with what they're doing lately and, and, and all, of their different, um, all of their different original programming, which I find just most of it's very compelling, interesting, everything else. Um, but they have a new one coming out, new animated show called Big Mouth. It's going to be on Netflix. It's an animated show about puberty. Uh, it's somewhat based off a true story, somewhat based off a true story, uh, and that would be the true story of Nick Kroll and his, and his good friend Andrew Goldberg, who I believe is also a producer in the uh, television industry, and they put together this animated show, and it's all about like them as kids going through puberty and everything else, so I think it'll be interesting. Check out the trailer if, you, if you're into those kind of animated, it's, it's going to be, it's a little raunchy, obviously, it's... Uh, it's, it's like F is for Family that I've talked about on this show and some of those more raunchy animated shows, uh, or like South Park, like I just mentioned as well. Um, so check that one out. It is Nick Kroll is an actual voice on it, along with uh, John Mulaney. If you're not familiar with John Mulaney, he had a little show um, of his own a couple years ago. It didn't do real well, but he's a big time, uh, uh, he's a big comedy writer. Uh, also does a bunch of stand-up and stuff, so check that out. John Mulaney, Big Mouth on Netflix, coming out soon. I don't have the exact date on that. Yes, I do. It's right in front of me. I'm finding it right now. No, I'm not because I don't know where my cursor is. Can you tell we're having a little bit of technical difficulties? This is just, hey, I'm ready to just walk away from this episode. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm ready to walk away from this fucking episode because that's the kind of fucking day I'm having. I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. We're just, we're going to be done. We're going to be done. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's do a little more film and I don't even know what's happening here. I don't. I don't. And this is episode 30. This is supposed to be a banner episode. And this is what happens. This is what happens. Uh, technical difficulties. Things mess with me. And I just, yeah, I'm fucking over it. I'm over it. That's three F-bombs. That's a record for Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I probably have to put this stupid explicit thing on there on iTunes and Google Play and everything else. And 
Yeah, yeah. Mm, yep, yep. Over it. Over it. Over it. Let me know, wall fans, if you're even interested in this crap anymore. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Mm, I'm not. Not interested. All right, let's talk a little more TV, film, and books. TV, film, and books. I talked about a little movie a couple weeks ago called It. It. Stephen King's It. Stephen King's It. Uh, and I had kind of wondered, because it had so much popularity behind it, so much, so much, such a big marketing push, uh, and especially with Stephen King and The Dark Tower, it just, it bombed. It did so terribly, so terribly at the box office, completely bombed. Um, but then, interestingly enough, it came out last weekend um, and killed it, killed it. In fact, the projections were like 20 million and it did 100 and something million uh, last weekend. So I, I would say I take that back or my, like I was wrong, uh, but I wasn't, I won't say I was actually wrong because I didn't say this is going to do bad. You can go back and even call me out on that. I was just, I didn't understand where the fandom came from for it, for Stephen King's it. And apparently the fandom is there. It's totally there, interestingly enough. Uh, and people were going out in droves to see it, to see it. If you're scared of clowns, just don't even go check it out. I won't be seeing it in the theater. I did see the the mini series that they did on television back in the 90s, but I won't be seeing this one just because I'm not a huge horror fan. Uh, I tend to watch a lot of comedies and that kind of stuff. If you've been a listener of the podcast, you know I went to film school because of Kevin Smith. I went to film school because of Kevin Smith, so that should just tell you a little bit about the kind of movies that I watch. Um, and especially with the kind of stuff that we talk about on this show. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about in TV, film, and books, and I put this one in TV simply because of the industry it's impacting and the people it's impacting. I read an article recently on LA Times uh, past couple weeks, and there's another big, big layoff company coming with our favorite layoff company, and that would be the Walt Disney Company, specifically in the Disney ABC television group uh, team, which coincidentally happens to be the team that I worked on when I was at Disney and was in a huge layoff. And they're looking at a huge layoff. Um, and I'm starting to think like, Disney is really a professional at these freaking layoffs. They're an absolute professional at these layoffs uh, and they're just gonna continue doing it. They're gonna continue doing it and they're gonna do it some more um, because money is what's important to them. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, and I'm sure they have the reasons behind it. I'm, I, I don't mean to bash Disney completely. I will tell you they are like the greediest company on the face of the earth. Uh, but I, I don't mean to sit here and bash them. It's just simply, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the people that are going to be affected by this. Because this is constantly what's happening. Ever-evolving industry when it comes to television and everything else. We've talked about Disney launching their own streaming site, getting away from Netflix and all that other good stuff, you know. Um, just craziness. So we'll see what happens there. If you do work for Disney and Disney ABC Television Group, hopefully you're not going to be in that layoff. Uh, but my heart does go out to all of you because it's, it's rough, especially if, for these Disney lifers that have been with Disney for a very, very long time to then just completely lose their job, you know, after like 10, 15, 20 years. Because um, it happens. They just, they just let them go. They just let them go. Here's, here's, you know, here's your severance and go collect some unemployment. Um, all right, let's move on. We're going to move on to a little bit of music here. We are just going to do a little bit of music. And I have some news from our, I don't want to say good friend, but we are a fan of the great Mark Hoppus, who is the bassist and lead singer, uh, one of the lead singers of Blink-182. Uh, he's back in the news again. Uh, twofold, actually. A couple different things. Well, same thing, but a couple, we'll unpack it a little bit. So there is an album that just came out. Uh, that was, I have the producer right in front of me, um, I don't have the producer right in front of me, yes I do, I'll, uh, no, the song, that's the songwriter, anyway, there's an album that, come, that came out, uh, called Dog Songs, and a producer put this album together, it's all songs about dogs, all songs about dogs, this entire album, 14 songs, uh, about dogs, and the reason they put this together is all the proceeds uh, for downloads and purchasing of this album is benefiting the animals of Hurricane Harvey. Benefiting those animals in Hurricane Harvey. Uh, and so all the proceeds, so check it out just based on that. But then on top of that, Mark Hoppus uh, wrote and produced a track for the album um, called Not All Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, and don't be turned off by that song title. The interesting thing about this album is all of the songs 
on the album are based on songs from movies, or songs, based on dogs from movies and television. Completely based on um, dogs from movies and television. So they're kind of funny, and that's why this Not All Dogs Go to Heaven um, song title kind of makes sense. Uh, and the reason is, that specific song that Mark Hoppus wrote for the album is about, uh, is about the dog from Vacation. If you're not familiar with Vacation, I believe it came out in the late 70s, early 80s. It was Chevy Chase. It started uh, basically his, his empire of vacation movies, from vacation to European vacation to Christmas vacation. We won't talk about that Vegas monstrosity that came out in the 90s because it's a monstrosity and we're just not going to talk about it. Um, but that's what his song is based on. Is that dog, if you're not familiar with the movie, I don't want to spoil anything for you. Check it out. If you haven't seen Vacation, everyone, everyone should, like, needs to see Vacation if you've never seen it before. So check it out. Chevy Chase and Vacation. It's based on the dog from that movie. So you'll understand a little more. If you listen to the song first and then watch the movie, you'll get, get a better understanding of kind of the lyrics for the song and everything else. God, I told you this. I told you this episode was going off the rails. We are so far off the freaking rails. Pens. My pen is over there. I don't, if I need to make notes, it's not happening the rest of the episode. Just not. Um, I did talk a little bit about the Punk and Drublick tour. I've got that here in the music section, so check that out. Coming to Huntington Beach on October 28th, I'll be dragging Bridget, my on-air producer, uh, to that as well. Because, you know, good punk rock music. Everyone needs a little good punk rock music in their life. It, they just need it. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about in music... There's a reason that it is September in Los Angeles and I'm sitting on the live stream, stream wearing a hoodie. And that is because this is a very special hoodie. For those of you watching on the Facebook live stream, you can see the incredible face of Animal, the Muppet Animal, on my shirt wearing some sunglasses. And it happens to say underneath this, uh, Muppets take the bowl. That's right. If you don't know, you haven't been listening to the podcast before, but I'm a huge Muppet fan. Huge Muppet fan. In fact, my playa name is Magical Muppet. Uh, actually, not really relating to my Muppet fandom. Just happened to be a happy coincidence. Um, and my incredible, beautiful, uh, loving wife for Father's Day got me tickets to see the Muppets at the Bowl. It was a little show they did last weekend at the Hollywood Bowl here in Los Angeles. Uh, they did three nights, and it was the Muppets take the Hollywood Bowl... Uh, and I will tell you right now on the podcast, on the Facebook live stream, that this is basically the best show I have ever been to. Ever been to. And that's why I left there with an incredibly overpriced hoodie from Muppets Take the Bowl because it is the most... It's hard to say most incredible show I've ever seen. But I will tell you this. I also went to see Hamilton a few weeks ago. Everyone's freaking the heck out about Hamilton. Freaking the heck out about Hamilton. I would rather see Muppets Take the Bowl like five more times than see Hamilton like any time I want. Now, that's just me. I'm a big Muppets fan. I'm a big Muppets fan. Teared up a little bit. I'll be honest, I teared up a little bit. As I teased at the top of the show, I had a bit of a rough week last week. Uh, so when Kermit comes out with that banjo, you know what's happening. And in fact, I left my seats to run to the restroom because I went, this is a good time to run to the restroom. And I walked down the stairs. If you've never been to the Hollywood Bowl, it's huge. It's a huge amphitheater. Huge. It's a bowl. Uh, and I start walking down the stairs uh, to go to the bathroom. And I look down at the stage. And I see Kermit coming out with his banjo. And I knew right away. Right away. And I ran back to my seat next to my wife. And I said, I ain't missing Kermit with the banjo. And if you're not familiar with Kermit and the Banjo, uh, go on YouTube when you're done listening to this podcast, when you're done looking at the live stream. If you're still here, I had a little bit of a tirade in the middle there. I'm so sick of technical difficulties. I'm so sick of them. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm going to maybe start recording my podcast on a wax cylinder so I don't have to deal with technology anymore. And then I can hand it to some intern and say, digitize this so I don't have to do it anymore. Um, anyway, YouTube it. YouTube uh, you can probably just YouTube Kermit on the banjo. Just YouTube that. And I want you to check out what song that is uh, because I'm not even going to get into uh, the actual lyrics here. Because honestly, I'll probably tear up a little. Which And usually I don't tear up at those lyrics. However, 
with the week I had last week uh, and seeing Kermit come out live with that banjo uh, was basically one of the best things I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, next to marrying my wife and the birth of my daughter is probably Muppets Take the Bowl. I'll be honest, and that's why I'm wearing a uh, ridiculous hoodie, even though it's still quite warm in L.A. Although it's not really that warm. We've, we've finally cooled down a little bit. Uh, I think we're getting a little bit of rain here coming in soon. A little thunderstorm system. I don't even know what's happening. But I keep seeing clouds. I keep seeing clouds, and they tell me there's rain coming. Um, oh, thank you, Bridget. Uh, Kermit does have a new voice. Kermit has a new voice. Uh, and I'll tell you, Bridget and everyone listening to the podcast and those of you uh, watching on the Facebook live stream, I had totally forgotten that Kermit had a new voice until after the show at the Bowl. I t- had totally forgotten. Um, so I think if you don't know that, that Kermit has a new voice now, uh, the voice actor for Kermit was, was fired months and months ago. Um, I'm not going to get into reasons and everything else, uh, but he was fired months ago. They brought in a new voice actor um, and really didn't skip, didn't miss a beat, didn't miss a beat. I wouldn't even have noticed, uh, wouldn't even have known, except for the fact that I had read up on it, you know, and, and known that the the voice actor for Kermit had uh, had been replaced. So that's a good point. Thank you, Bridget. Um, all right, we're going to get into some tech now. Oh, we're so far off the rails, I just can't take it. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I Honestly, if you're watching on Facebook, this this could be... The only way you're going to see this would, might be on Facebook Live, because I don't even know if I'm going to post this this episode. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. It's not going to happen, Facebook friends and wall fans, simply because of technical difficulties. Um, let's get into a little bit of tech. Actually, this is an important one, uh, because something awesome happened. And that would be Nintendo, this week, announced that they are re-releasing the NES Classic. That's right. The NES Classic is coming back in summer 2018. So we have to wait like a year, but everyone will have the opportunity again to buy the NES Classic. You will have that opportunity again to buy the NES Classic next summer, summer 2018. I'm super excited because if you are a Go Tall to the Wall podcast listener, you know that I have been on Nintendo about this really since November, since it came out, and the, uh, and the stock was very short. And you can actually buy an NES Classic right now if you go on Amazon and want to spend $200. Whereas the MSRP on the thing was $59.99. So you're talking like 100 and some dollars more, I mean at $200, $140 more, uh, but to most likely 100 and some dollars more than the original retail price. And I was calling out Nintendo like crazy, calling them out on it for creating this ridiculous fake hysteria over this NES Classic. Now, some of that was personal because I wanted an NES Classic. It came out on November 11th, 2016, uh, my daughter's birthday, literally her birthday, the day she was born, uh, and that's why I didn't even have the opportunity to go out to the store. Now, obviously, I didn't need one that much because I didn't even think about it until the next day uh, when we were home, um, but it did come out November 11th, and there's going to be more of them coming out. I will be waiting in line, and like I said, I'll take a little bit of credit for that, for giving Nintendo such a hard time uh, over the course of many, many episodes of Go Tell to the Wall podcast, um, because they are bringing it back. They're bringing it back. It's coming back, uh, and that's that's because of the demand. Because you know we live in that kind of world where you shouldn't just hold things back from people. Nintendo. All right, a new iPhone came out or got announced this week. Yeah, everyone freaked out. It's almost like I don't. Here's the thing. Respect. If you're an Apple fan, that's fine. I get it. It's crazy when they do these keynotes and stuff. Because uh, I think it was Tuesday morning. Was it Tuesday morning? It must have been Tuesday morning. I think it was the 12th. Uh, I go on. I'm scrolling through social media as my daughter's taking a nap. I'm like, geez, everyone's freaking out. Everyone's freaking out. And everybody's watching the Apple keynote. Like, we got to watch the Apple presentation. See what's coming out. New and Everyone knew a new iPhone was coming out. New a new. <laughs> Everyone knew the latest iPhone was going to be announced, um, so I'm sure that's why they were, were freaking out. Um, so I, I'm not going to get into details on it simply because I haven't looked at it that closely. I'm not an iPhone user myself, um, so it's kind of lower on my list of, of specs to check out. I will point out one thing uh, is kind of the new cameras that they put into these iPhones definitely caters to uh, selfie takers. 
selfie takers. Uh, and I've read that, that little tidbit, I've read in a couple different places uh, where there will be catering to, um, I mean, the phone itself caters to selfie takers, which is interesting because that's just like that, you know, if you'd said 15, like, it's not even 15 years. I mean, when the first smartphone started coming out, like the, it, there wasn't a huge priority on like front facing cameras and selfies and everything else. You still had to turn your phone around to take a thing. Now it's, they've got the front facing camera and all this other stuff. I mean, I remember my, 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 my first Blackberry didn't have a camera on the front. And actually, I think my first Blackberry didn't have a camera at all. I think my second one had a camera on the back. Um, uh, yeah, it is noise. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the live feed. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with these things. Everyone's going to freak out. The interesting thing is the the price point on it is $1,000. Um, so all the narcissists out there that are going to need <laughs> those awesome cameras for their selfies, uh, get ready to pay a pretty penny. $1,000. $1,000 for a freaking cell phone. Man. Man. I just, I can't bring myself to be carrying a $1,000 piece of uh, technology around in my pocket. Like, that's just too much. And I respect all the stuff that it's probably going to have and the cool coolness to it and everything else. But it's just so hard to be like, I just spent $1,000 on the thing that's sitting in my pocket. I don't think I have anything that goes out on me that costs $1,000. I don't even think I have any watches like that. I mean, not my wedding ring. My wedding ring's not $1,000. Um, anyway, so that'll be interesting. There was an, one great interesting thing that did come out of the Apple presentation this week, and that was... It's actually, I don't think it actually came out of the Apple presentation, uh, but there are rumors, uh, and I think it's pretty much been confirmed, that there will be a new iPod coming out. Now, this is good and bad for me personally, because I've talked about on the podcast that I like the smaller iPods. I still have an iPod Nano. Um, what, not the, I had the small, small one, and then that died on me, and I still have one of like the Nanos, that latest generation of Nanos before they discontinued them. And I like it for working out at the gym and everything else. Um, so they discontinued all those, which was disappointing for me because I know as soon as that iPod dies, I'm done. I will no longer be able to, to get an iPod, you know. Uh, but they are going to continue with the iPod touches, it looks like. Uh, so you will still have something lighter than a phone. Um, and if you're not familiar with iPod touches, it's, it's, it's much smaller than phones, especially now that phones have gotten to this like five to seven inch size uh, as they have over the past couple of years. It's still going to be much smaller than having like a phone hanging uh, on your arm, on your wrist, or whatever else, you know. Um, that's it for tech. That's it for tech. That's it for tech. I can't believe we're still doing this show because we're so far off the goddamn rails. It's blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind. In fact, let's have... Oh, this, this will teach me. Only one beer before the podcast and then one during instead of two before. No, actually, you know what's teaching me? is technology is ridiculous. We're going to work on the wax cylinders. Wax cylinders, man. Oh, that's where we gotta go. I'm just kidding. That'd be crazy. Wax cylinders. All right. We're running a little short on time. The interesting thing is I'm trying to track my time because there's a big gap in there from when I was trying to fix the technical difficulty. So we'll see how this goes. Probably not even gonna post this. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but we are continuing with the Burning Man segment. Now that everyone is back from the burn. In fact, that's how Kevin joined here. Kevin is... Freshly back from the burn, well, freshly a week ago, a week and a half ago, um, since unfortunately we missed last week's episode. Uh, I do want to address the elephant in the room, uh, and that would be what happened at this year's burn on burn night, um, out at the burn. And if you're not familiar with burn night, this is when the man actually burns. Uh, and most of you listening have probably heard about this. In fact, uh, I... My, my parents had asked me about this, uh, and, and that was that a, a gentleman decided on that Saturday night, man burn night, uh, to, to break the perimeter of the man burn uh, as the man was, was well, well on fire uh, and starting to fall, and, and ran and jumped straight into the flames and the embers of the man burn. It happened. Uh, if you're not familiar with this and you're just now hearing about it, um, I wouldn't even say do any research. Here's the thing. I want to unpack this a little bit. The media really blew this one up. Um, I have talked to multiple people that were at the burn and saw nothing. Weren't even aware of it 
uh, until the next day uh, when, when certain burns had been canceled because the next day was actually like the last full day of the burn. Uh, they almost canceled the temple burn, as a matter of fact. And if you've listened to previous episodes where I've talked about Burning Man, you know how important the temple burn is to me, is to my friends, and, and, and much of my family. Um, the reason I want to unpack this is because how it, this is such a great example of how the media runs with things uh, and doesn't even necessarily have things accurate, you know. So things were coming out the next day about this guy. And there were reports that people, he had said this to people all week, that he was going to run into the, 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 the flames of the man. You know, and then there were stories coming out, uh, people saying that he was on drugs and all this other stuff. Well, here's the important thing to remember while seeing this. And that's why I hesitate because I want to approach this correctly. The thing to remember is that it's not about all the other people at this festival now. Granted, there were some people near that location that may have seen something and could probably use some counseling. However, it's not about the other 68,000 999 people or whatever. That's bad math. That's probably like 669,950 or so. The important thing is this young man and his family. Because the next day, as all this was unfolding, which was a Sunday, photos started popping up. Then videos started popping up. This man's family, he was 41 years old, had to see video and photos of their brother, their son, their grandson, their father, their husband, running into the flames at the man and committing suicide. And we don't even know that he was trying to commit suicide. So the reason I bring this up is I don't want anyone to, I don't want anyone to jump to conclusions. As wall fans, we use common sense. And even here, even if we do get some stuff to light that maybe he was on drugs or whatever else it might have been. The important thing is to remember that he has a family and how tough this is on them. So regardless of the decisions that he made, we need to consider his family. Now this can be said for anything. This just happens to, to come up because I am familiar with Burning Man and I'm familiar with the stigma of Burning Man that everyone assumes this guy's on drugs right away and maybe he was. I don't know. I didn't know him. But it shouldn't define Burning Man. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, uh, this shouldn't be shoved in the faces of burners, of his family, of his friends. It shouldn't be. Do we need to talk about it? Hell yeah. Of course we need to talk about it. But what I ask is that you don't jump to conclusions. Don't jump to conclusions. Use common sense. And even if we do find out things, remember that it's still a tragedy regardless of the circumstances. Regardless of what drove him to do that, it's still a tragedy. It's still a loss of life. That's still someone's son that is no longer with us. Brutally no longer with us. You know? So keep that in mind, Ball fans. Keep that in mind. Uh, and we're going to have more Burning Man stuff. I'm getting caught up. In fact, I'm going to spend some time on Saturday getting caught up with this year's burn. A couple people uh, will be seeing Saturday that we're at this year's burn. Um, since I wasn't, I will be getting caught up on that as well. Um, all right, I got to skip some stuff, and I threw my pen away, so I'm not going to remember what I'm skipping. So we'll see if we get back to that next episode. Uh, I do want to talk about two more quick things, really quick. Red Cross, American Red Cross, talked about it on the show so many times when it came to Haiti, uh, when it came to Houston, uh, when it just comes to their general practices. The story came out, and this is one. This is factual, because Snopes checked it out, and everything else. Uh, so Red Cross was in Houston after the hurricane, after Hurricane Harvey. And as you know, people donate to the American Red Cross like crazy. They donate, they give money, they give whatever else. Really, it's just money. Red Cross actually doesn't accept most things. They they accept money, um, funds. What happened was uh, they had a bunch of stuff for animals specifically for dogs, down in Houston to help out animals displaced by Hurricane Harvey. Well, they were moving on from Houston. 
they're getting out of Houston because Red Cross is done down there. Even though there's still a lot of cleanup, they're done. And because they had some leftover donations for dogs, for animals, they decided to throw it away, as opposed to contacting anyone else. Or even just putting it somewhere to be given away, they started throwing all of this away. Specifically, about 600 blankets and 500 pounds of dog food were being thrown away. Luckily, someone in Houston caught wind of this, went and confronted them on it, and, they, and specifically they said to them uh, that they would collect more for what's going on in Florida. This is how the American Red Cross runs. This is how they run. They're interested in paying salaries and collecting donations and then moving on. Moving on. They're moving on to Florida. We'll see what they throw away in Florida. Now, fortunately, some rescue organizations in Houston, which blows my mind that American Red Cross couldn't just pick up the phone, some, you know, just ran like Google. Houston Animal Rescue. I could do it right now. It's so easy. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it right now. I'm not really doing it. I'm just pretending I'm doing it. And say, hey, we got 600 blankets, 500 pounds of dog food. You want it? Hell yeah, we want it. No, they start throwing it away. This is why you don't donate to the American Red Cross. Don't. Find elsewhere to donate to. Find elsewhere. Buy the Dog Songs album. Hmm? Buy the Dog Songs album. That's going to help. It's going to help. Sure is. That's going to help. Uh, and that's why we just don't like the American Red Cross. I don't. I don't. Because they're shady. They are shady. All right, we're out of time. Uh, episode 30 has been an absolute train wreck. It's been an absolute train wreck, which is ridiculous because at the top of this show, I talked about some new things coming down the hopper and some new things we're getting involved in. Uh, we probably just lost all of those things with the train wreck that was episode 30 and the live feed of episode 30 that was an absolute train wreck. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, this was probably the most train wrecky off the rails podcast yet, but it happens. Um, I do want to. I do want to talk about one more thing, um, and that was what I was avoiding at the top of the show. And I. Twofold. I want to point out because a lot of people had a very terrible 2016 because a lot of celebrities died. All of their coke-addled movie stars from the 80s, you know, had things like heart attacks and, and passed away, you know, which is sad. It's very sad. Uh, but when you do a bunch of cocaine, these things happen. I just want people you know personally. Fast forward to 2017. I've lost some real people in 2017. Real. And that came to a head last week. You know, I lost, I lost my grandmother. We lost our dog earlier in the year, and I'm not even getting into to all of it. Um, but I will say, losing losing my little my little cat last week after 12 years. Um, I mean, I had that cat before I was married, before I knew my wife. Uh, and there'd be many days when I was out. I was training for triathlons at that time, and I would. Uh, I'd come home and she'd be on my bed, you know, and that was, uh, that was kind of my rock. And a lot of that is because I, you know, I suffer from uh, obsessive compulsive disorder and obsessive anxiety disorder. I needed that rock, you know, it just did. And unfortunately last week, you know, I had to, I had to literally watch her Pass away. It's, it's been tough for me. Uh, I come and go. That's why I didn't want to talk about it at the top of the show again. In and out of uh, how rough it is. Um, so I apologize. That's probably why this was a train wreck of a show. Is I'm still dealing with it. And she's not here in the studio with me. Um, so just bear with me, Wolf fans. And uh, I'll say it again. Hug the ones you love. Enjoy the time you have with them. And just remember that, unfortunately, uh, time is short. Time is short. Um, and personally, I'm hoping that uh, 2018 brings me a little, a little better luck when it comes to loss and everything else. But we'll see how that goes. Because life is life. Can't even get the podcast to work for me, you know. Um, but it happens. 
It happens. And I'm going to leave you with that, Wall fans. I'm going to leave you with that. I don't know if this episode's actually going to get posted. If you're not completely scared off from the train wreck that was episode 30, uh, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Um, also on Twitter, at tell the wall pod. And follow me personally, at magic muppet. Um, and hopefully we'll be back next week. Like I said, we got some good stuff coming down the pipes that we'll continue to work on for all of you. Um, and please just share. Don't share episode 30. Share Go Tell to the Wall podcast. Um, tell your friends. If you enjoy it, tell your friends. If you don't enjoy it, tell your friends how much you hate it. I don't care. Just get the word out there. Um, but check us out. Social media. I'm trying to get that, that up and running. Uh, the website is coming very, very soon. Working on the podcast-specific website as well as uh, SeanRorgLive.com, which will be coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and we will be back next week, barring any technical difficulties. And honestly, I'm out of pets to die. I don't, I don't have any more pets left. So that can't affect things, um, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because it can't affect things because that's a good thing, but it's... Uh, it's been a rough week. It's been a rough couple months. It's been a rough year, for God's sake. Um, but we're going to keep powering through, Wall fans. We're going to keep powering through uh, because common sense dictates that we power through. Um, and we've got to have that passion. We've got to have that passion, Wall fans. Uh, so with that, I will say this has been episode 30 of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. Uh, I am the not-so-one-and-only Sean O'Rourke. Thank you for listening, Wall fans. Remember... Always have passion, and no matter what you do, no matter who you meet, no matter why you do it, no matter where you go, always, always, always use common sense. All right, Wall fans, Facebook Live watchers, thank you. I don't even know what this is going to look like on Facebook. We lost the feed earlier. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go finish this pumpkin drublick, and I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. That's where we're at, because I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm at my wit's end. Technical issues. Pets dying. Just can't do it anymore. I'm sitting here in the studio uh, by myself. By myself. So, but thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Uh, love to all of you. Thank you, Bridget, for keeping me in line. Um, and we will be back next week with episode 31 of Go Tell Us The Wall podcast. Uh, and I promise to be in a little better shape. Less of a train wreck. Less off the rails. I'm promising it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so remember, Wall fans, whatever you do, do it with passion. And no matter where you go, always, always use common sense.